In a previous video on the Master YouTube channel, I showed how to implement single turn human in the loop interactions with Master. In that video, we used the suspend function to pause a workflow and await user approval before moving on to the next step. We also looked at how to pause within the context of a more complicated workflow and await arbitrary user inputs before proceeding. In both cases, the human provides a single input the workflow processes it and then delivers an output without really requiring further interaction. That's single turn interaction, and it's a very common, very important pattern. Another crucial pattern, and the subject of this video, is multi-turn human in the loop interaction. This is where the human and agent go back and forth multiple times as part of a workflow to iteratively refine and optimize the output. In its simplest form, a multi-turn workflow is essentially the chaining together of multiple single turn steps. In this video, however, we're going to focus on a more advanced implementation, which involves running the same step in a loop until a condition has been satisfied. I'm telling you, this multi-turn in a loop is a very powerful pattern, and it's actually the basis for many AI conversational interfaces. To bring that home, I'll show you how to connect the workflow to your React client towards the end. Sound good? Great. Let's get into it. My name is Alex with Mastra, the TypeScript AI framework. Let's dive into the lesson. Let's run through the workflow once in the playground to orientate ourselves, get a nice visual representation of the workflow before looking at the code in a moment. The first step, generate initial game state, is responsible for choosing a random famous person that represents the correct answer in the game. It also returns some state to track between steps throughout the workflow, as well as the initial response to return and render to the user in the UI. Once that step finishes executing, the play game step runs and immediately suspends. As you can see, it's in a paused state. And on the right hand side here, we're prompted to resume the workflow with either a yes, no question or a guess. I'll ask, is it a woman and press resume. As you saw there, the step briefly executed before determining the game is not won yet. And because we have this do until loop that runs until the game is won, essentially the play game step runs again from the top. Along with the game state, the step returned a response. No, it's not a woman. We can make another guess. I'll ask, is it messy? And this time, if we look at the output, you can see the game was won. Therefore, the loop exits and proceeds to the final step and game. This is where we can see the success message and learn we completed the game in just two steps. Now, you might be looking at this thinking, this ain't a very good game. You can see the answer right here. But realistically, a user won't interact with the playground. This is a development environment. They might interact with the game via a chat-based interface, something like this, where they can ask yes, no questions and continue to guess until they get it right. I'll show you how to implement this front end towards the end, but for now, let's dig deeper into the workflow code and I'll teach you how to implement a multi-turn human in the loop interaction in your own agents. Here's the workflow definition. And as you can see, it pretty much mirrors what we saw in the playground. The first step generates initial game state. It essentially picks a random famous person from the famous people array and returns some initial game states. The output of this step becomes the input for the next step, which is called play game. In Mastra, the output from the previous step always becomes the input for the next step. The play game step executes repeatedly until the game is won, as described by this stopping condition passed to the do until function. Let's take a closer look at the play game function. There's quite a lot going on here. And if you haven't seen my previous video about suspend and resume schema, it might look a bit foreign. The best way I think to understand what's going on here, whether you've seen the previous video or not, is to almost step through the execution and understand what's happening step by step. So let's pretend we're running the game for the first time. The generate initial game state step outputs the famous person, Messi, and then immediately calls play game. As you can see, play game is paused. This happens because when the step first executes, there is no resume data present, and therefore we're going to call suspend, which pauses the workflow and prompts the user to enter the resume schema 
as defined in the resume schema option here and is accessible via resume data arguments. Because we call return, no more code in this execute function executes. This run of the execute function is done and Mastra is actually going to track the state of the workflow in the execution JSON. As you can see, the workflow is suspended and in particular, the play game step. Now, in a moment, we're going to resume the step with a guess. We'll ask, is it a woman? Before we press resume here, let's think about what's going to happen. When we press resume, the execute function is going to run from the very top again. This time, resume data will be present because we have supplied a question. And because resume data is present, we're going to skip over this block, which has the effect of resuming the step from where it left off previously. The whole point of this step is to handle the yes, no questions and handle the guesses provided by the user in order to return an appropriate response and determine if the guess is correct and the game is won. We could, I suppose, have implemented a game engine using imperative code, but in this case, we're using a game agent to handle the game states. We won't go into too much detail here, but suffice it to say, we lean on the game agent powered by GPT-40 to behave as the game engine. The most important detail here is that we use Mastra's structured output feature to ensure that when the agent is called, we get an appropriate response, as well as information about whether the game was won or not. We access those variables here. Once we've handled the user's input essentially by calling into the game agent, we're going to return an output from the step. This includes the famous person as well as the guess count incremented by one to represent the guess the user just made. We also return the response and the game won value provided by the game agent. Now remember what I said earlier, the output of a step in Mastra always becomes the input for the next step. What is the next step once we return here? Well, to find out, let's look at the workflow definition. Looking at the workflow definition, we're reminded that play game happens inside of a do until loop. Therefore, the next step could be the play game step again, but Mastra will only run that play game step again if the game is not won. If the game is won, it won't try and run play game. It will call the next logical step, which is end game. Endgame doesn't really do much apart from let the user know they've won. Let's take a look at this in action. As a reminder, last time we run the step, we only got this far. We immediately returned and put the step in a suspended state. Now, when we give a guess, the execute function runs from the top. This time resume data is present. It resumes, evaluates the inputs, returns the values. In this case, because it was just a guess, game one is false. Therefore, the do until loop checks if the input of the next step, which is play game, has a game one false value. It does, and so it actually runs the play game step. When we provide an input, for example, is it messy? Notice how the step play game outputs game one. Master is going to try and provide this output as the input to the play game step. But before it does that, it runs this quick check. It turns out the game is won, and so it won't run play game. It will run end game instead. Remember, every time this step is run from the top, you lose your resume data. Why is that important? Well, let me show you. In this case, we run the game, it enters a suspended state, and we make a guess. Is it a woman? Master looks at the output of that step. It sees that game one is false, and so it runs play game again from the top. But because it's basically a brand new execution, resume data is not going to be present, and therefore we enter a suspended state again. So we're doing two things here, which I think are really, really interesting. The first is that we're running this step multiple times until the workflow is satisfied that it's done with the user. Yes, in this case, it's a game, but you could totally imagine how a user and an agent might be going back and forth to refine some output or some data. Frankly, you could even use this agent to implement some kind of employee training where they have to get the answer right according to the agent before continuing. That would be pretty realistic and cool. The other thing that I think is neat is how the agent tracks state between different steps. 
Because the output of the previous step becomes the inputs of the next step, it allows us to maintain states such as the guess counts and the correct answer, which is the famous person, between different executions of the play game step, and ultimately it allows us to access those same values in the end game step, which is useful for rendering data to the user. By the way, because we're using an agent to determine if the game is won, it's smart enough to know that if I ask, is it Tay Tay? I'm referring to Taylor Swift and the game ends, as I was just explaining. You can see the guess count and the final response. Let's take a closer look at how you could build a user interface on top of a multi-turn workflow. Oftentimes, a multi-turn workflow is a prime candidate for a chat interface, but unlike an agent where it has a lot of autonomy and might go off in the wrong direction, a workflow gives you discrete steps and control over how the agent is called, which might be more suitable for your situation. I'm really excited to show you this because as brilliant as the playground is for getting started quickly and understanding concepts, naturally you'll want to execute these workflows from within your own applications. So let's take a peek at the code. Here's a React application that uses the official master client to initialize, resume, and inspect the master workflow over HTTP. To be clear, there are two projects in this folder, client and server. They both run in separate processes, and the client calls over HTTP to interact with the server, meaning you could conceivably host them in different places. In development, I actually prefer to use just one command to run both. You can see how this project is set up by looking at the code in GitHub. When the component is first mounted, we call the master client to get the game workflow. To run a workflow in TypeScript, you need to call a function called create run async. This returns a unique run ID, and then you call start async on the workflow you're trying to run passing the run ID. The run ID is this unique reference that allows you to access the workflow in the future, for example, to resume it or inspect its execution graph. As you'll recall, the first step is to generate initial game state, and it returns a message letting the user know the game is started and they should start making guesses or asking yes, no questions. We take that message and we add it to the UI. Later, when the user submits a message like a guess or maybe a question, we're going to access the game workflow and resume it. We need to specify that run ID so Master knows which execution of the workflow we're referring to. Because remember, a workflow is essentially an outline or a blueprint for a workflow. You can instantiate and run the workflow as many times as you want. Each of those workflows could be suspended or not suspended. It's the run ID we use to track the specific workflow we are operating over in this case. We want to resume the play game step. And just like in the master playground where we entered into the text box, the question or guess, here we use code to provide the resume data. This function runs asynchronously and returns a result. We can then check the status of the workflow. This is a type of metadata on the workflow master provides to determine whether it's suspended or if it has successfully executed. If it's suspended, we take the response from the step, which will be its response, such as an answer to a question or maybe a guess. If the workflow has successfully completed, we know we've progressed onto the end game step. And so we're going to inspect its response instead and set the game one message. We use the game one message to let the user know how many guesses they used. For example, here it says you wanted two guesses and I can press play again to go from the top. Thank you for watching. That concludes this two part exploration of human in the loop interactions. I hope this pattern helps and remember, if you have any questions or comments about Suspend or Human in the Loop with Master generally, please drop them right here on YouTube. Knowing what you're working on, your challenges and what's on your mind helps us at Master make you the best possible frameworks and videos. So please don't hold back. I've been Alex Booker. Thank you for watching.